Cool. So, all right, so let's talk about the elections on Tuesday. And, you know, I don't say this often enough. I really should say this more often, but I told you so. Uh, I told you that the social agenda of the Democrats doesn't sell. I told you that the extent that the Democrats run on critical race theory, on defund the police, they will lose. That the American people are not interested in those things, and they will vote for pretty much anybody who is opposed to the social agenda of the left. The left cannot win to the extent that it stands by the far left's actual positions. And that's exactly what happened on Tuesday. In Virginia, it's clear that what happened was that uh, parents, uh, particularly, uh, you know, parents, and you can see it by the age groups, the, the, there was a big increase in support for the Republican candidate from people aged 40 to 60, 65, 40 to 65. Parents whose kids are in school voted overwhelmingly, uh, not overwhelmingly, but, or, but increased. The, the increased share that the Republicans got was overwhelmingly, um, uh, overwhelmingly higher than in previous elections. Why? Because CRT was on the ballot, because uh, the, the, the Democrat basically says, I don't believe that parents should have a say into what their kids study in school. That killed him. That single sentence basically disqualified him. And what the Republican did uh, pretty smartly was distance himself from Trump without alienating Trump supporters. So he kind of did this balancing act of not alienating the core, the hard core, but attracting a lot of new voters, a lot of voters that typically wouldn't vote Republican and haven't voted Republican since 2009, over the last 12 years. And they voted Republican not because they liked him, because he was not offensive and because they disliked the position the Democrats was, were, were, were advocating for. They disliked the idea of their kids being infused with guilt over the color of their skin. Although it's interesting that it's not just whites. Hispanics shifted more towards Republicans in significant numbers. Hispanics don't buy they're typically, Hispanics are typically quite conservative. This is the big mistake Republicans make in giving up on the Hispanic population and handing it over to the Democrats. But if Republicans had a better view of immigration and if Republicans have just a better view of, of, of immigrants and, 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 and Hispanics in particular, I think they could easily grab the Hispanic vote on a national scale. But it wasn't just in Virginia. It was in uh, New Jersey, of all places. New Jersey that went to Biden double digits. The Republican almost won. And Republicans did gain significantly, I think significantly, in the House, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the New Jersey House and Senate. Indeed, the longtime Democratic Speaker of the House, I think, was defeated in his district. And again, it's, it's, it's a combination of we don't buy all this social stuff. We don't buy, we won't accept the social agenda. And now add to that the fact that Biden so far on his own terms is a failure. The economy, while seemingly growing, it's not clear that once you take into account the inflation, it's actually growing, in spite of the fact that wages are up, in spite of the fact that there are more job openings than there are people, people don't feel like the economy is doing well. They go into grocery stores and they are empty shelves. The shelves that are full, prices are up. McDonald's just announced that they'll be raising their prices across the board by up to 10%. And you're seeing this company after company after company announcing price increases. Inflation is here. Transitory 
probably means for the next few years. We'll talk about that when we talk about the Fed. Housing prices are up. There are barely any houses to buy. People don't feel like the economy is doing particularly well. And Biden, the Democrats are in power. The Democrats get the blame for it. Whether it's their fault or not is not even the issue. Because much of the economy we have right now is a consequence of what Trump did. Uh, the economy we have a year from now is a consequence of what Biden did. By the way, the only part of the economy that's doing fantastic is, um, is the stock market. I remember in the first year of the Trump administration, I have to say I told you so again, uh, and I'll keep saying it because you guys have no appreciation. Uh, anyway, uh, in the first year of uh, the Trump administration, the number of people who told me what a great president he was because the stock market was up a lot. And the stock market's up a lot, and they, over and over and over again, how high the stock market is. And that is, that is because of what a great president Donald Trump was in that first year. Well, under Biden, the stock market is actually up a little bit more than it was under Trump. And uh, under Obama, it was up a little bit more than under Trump, at least to this point. All pretty much about the same. So does that mean Biden is a great president? I said then, I'll say now, I'll say it in the future because it won't change, that the stock market is not a measure of good presidents. It's not correlated with good presidency. It has a lot more to do with how much money the Fed is flooding into the market than it has to do with how good the president is. Anyway, the economy's not doing well, uh, and every day we hear in the press, in the mainstream press, how the Democrats can't get their act together, and how they can't pass these bills, now nothing's getting through, and how Biden's agenda is failing, it's not going anywhere, that it's a losing campaign, and the mainstream media has chipped away at whatever support I think the Democrats had in, in, in uh, suburbia, in places uh, that Biden got a lot of votes, not because anybody liked Biden. I told you this after the election. Biden won because people voted against Trump. And people voted against Trump in record numbers. People came out to vote last year in record numbers, not because they love Biden, but because they despised Trump. And when you get an even slightly, moderately better candidate than Trump, Republicans can actually win in this country. But it's not just New Jersey and Virginia. Look at what happened in um, uh, Minneapolis, where there was a proposition on the ballot to do away with the police force and to replace it with some community security, some mumbo jumbo, right? And that was defeated soundly. It wasn't close. Defeated soundly. Even in Minneapolis, where the riots began last summer, even in Minneapolis, they don't want to get rid of the police. They've learned their lesson. Yeah, it sounded like a cool slogan in the heat of the moment. But no, nobody really wants to get rid of the police. That's not a winning strategy. You can see that, again, in the city of New York, where the mayor of New York, who was just elected, is a former police officer and a former Republican, considered a moderate Democrat. The progressives in the New York primary against him were defeated soundly. He won, then he went on to, be, to beat a nondescript Republican who nobody ever heard of. And the next mayor of New York is going to be far, far more centrist than de Blasio is. People had enough of the left. They don't like it. And then even in the city of Buffalo, New York, I don't know if you read about the story of Buffalo, New York. In 
In Buffalo, New York, right, um, there was, uh, in the Democratic primary, a radical leftist who called herself a, a Democratic Socialist won. So she was running as the Democratic candidate. The former mayor, who is a centrist Democrat, launched a write-in campaign against her. He beat her. She was defeated. Even in Buffalo, New York, where the Democrats chose a socialist, the people, I guess the non-Democrats, were not happy with that. So they chose a centrist Democrat to instead of her. The only, uh, you know, uh, the only two elections, so uh, Taylor says Seattle had a big election, two, a city attorney running as a Republican, won. Um, yeah, and uh, the new mayor is a moderate. You remember the, the, the mayor and the police chief in Seattle? You remember Kaz? You remember the, the, the anarchy in the streets of Seattle uh, last summer? Well, the people of Seattle didn't like that. They don't want a bunch of socialists running their city. So Seattle, one of the most leftist cities in the country, moved a little bit to the right. Yeah, Scott says, they, Scott is, you know, you're so frigging negative. It's unbelievable. They won the primary in the first place, though. Yes, in Buffalo, she won the primary because the Democratic, the, the, the enthusiasts, the activists in the Democratic Party are nutty leftists, but the rest of the country doesn't like nutty leftism, which is what I've been saying for years and years and years. That that nihilism, that egalitarianism, is not something the American people want. That racism is not something the American people want. And they showed that on Tuesday. So in city after city after city, you saw this. They were defeated. Um, all right? You can continue to argue with me. It will make you right. So um, now the question is, the question is going to be, what lessons do the Republicans learn from this? Uh, what will they learn? And who will they nominate? Will they run the kind of campaign that was run in Virginia, which was a, you know, uh, policy-wise, not very good, but uh, not wacky, not crazy, and not embracing of Trumpism? Will they run kind of a moderate Republican campaign, mainly highlighting the left's social issue problems? And when they be able to take the House back in 2022, next year, I think it's likely that they will. They might even take the Senate back. I think that'll be good. I've always said my ideal is a Democratic president and a House and Senate that are Republican. So we'll get that for at least two years and we'll see what that looks like. And then the question, of course, is will the Republicans, who will the Republicans nominate for president in, in two years? And that'll, to a large extent, I think, ultimately determine the future of the party and to the extent that it can actually serve as an opposition party to the Democrats um, and, 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 and whether it can win the presidency. Let's hope, let's hope it's not DeSantis. Right, let's hope it's not DeSantis. The more I hear of him, the more I listen to him, the more, the more kooky he comes across, the more nuts he is, the more populist, uh, the more authoritarian um, he seems. So I really hope it's not Trump or DeSantis. We'll see who it will be. All right. I still have hope. Still have hope for Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley um, gave a talk at Heritage uh, the other day. I saw bits of the video of it. She was quite good. Um, I mean, she's not afraid to, to, to actually say capitalism, to actually say capitalism is good. She doesn't have a complete understanding of what it is. She can't really defend it morally. But she says the words, and she, she's pro so I'm still a fan, um, and I think she's a fighter. I think it would be cool if the Republicans, uh, if, if, a, if, a, if a woman, the first woman president is a Republican rather than a Democrat, um, and, and, I, you know, and I, 
you know, she said something like in a talk, she said something like, capitalism was good for South Carolina and capitalism would be good for America. Now, again, I wish she, she understood what capitalism is, but I'll take it. I'll take somebody who uses the term positively and, and means by it broadly, generally, more free markets, which is what I think she means. All right, so overall, I'd say uh, from my perspective, as much as I hate politics and I hate both parties and I'm not a Republican and I don't particularly like Republicans, I would say this was a good uh, vote, I think partially because it sent a warning signal to the Democrats. I think this will force them to moderate. I think a lot of senators on the Democratic side are thinking right now, do I really want to vote for $1.75 trillion dollars? in another big social program. I, I think everybody's enjoying the fact that Man Manchin is, um, is, is taking the heat and cinema are taking the heat for this. But I think there's probably a half a dozen Democratic senators who'd rather just not vote on this. Uh, the House of Representatives tonight is probably going to vote on a $1.75 billion, trillion, billion, I wish, trillion dollar package. Um, I don't yet know what's in it exactly. In particular, I don't know what they what they uh, are, are using for the um, for the taxes. Uh, so um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what it is. One of my favorite little scenes from today was Mansion uh, being harassed by these demonstrators, and and he gets into the car. And you know what, Mansion. The, dem the senator, the Democratic senator, the senator of the people, for the people, is driving. You know what he drives? Anybody know what he drives? Like, he's driving the car I want. Right? I should go into politics. That's how you make money. I, I didn't realize. If I'd known, I would have not gone into finance. I would have gone into politics. So, so Manchin is driving a Maserati. I love that. Right, all these, um, all these climate change, you know, far left, crazy leftists uh, going crazy over Manchin, and he gets into Maserati, not a Tesla. No, God forbid, <laughs> a Tesla they would have kissed the tires, you know, the, the activists. No, this is a gas guzzling, you know, uh, I don't know, 450, 500 horsepower, maybe Maserati, uh, the kind of car that I should be driving. If I wasn't living in Puerto Rico, I might be driving. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. So uh, um, DC's been the richest metropolitan area for a long time, for a long time, yeah. All right, Maseratis, that's your reward for being a, a, a good, dedicated politician. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brooks Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.